Hey guys, in this video lecture, we're going to talk about a few more techniques for partitioning in distributed query processing. These are range, uh, hash, and list partitioning, these three methods. In the last video lecture, we discussed vertical and horizontal partitioning. In this video lecture, we're going to talk about range, hash, and list partitioning. So let's first talk about range partitioning. Uh, range partitioning involves uh, dividing data into partitions based on a specified range of values, as its name specifies. Uh, this is particularly useful for data with natural ordering, such as timestamps, where you know uh, data involves dates or numerical ranges. Queries that involve range ranges benefit from reduced data scanning. Let me give you an example to show you how data scanning is reduced in distributed query processing use, using range partitioning. Let's consider a table named sales underscore data that stores information about sales transactions. One of the columns in this table is transaction date, right? And this column holds the date of each transaction. So whenever the transaction was made, it holds the date of that transaction. Now we want to use range partitioning based on the transaction date column. Okay, so now for everyone, it will be different. Everyone will have a different way of thinking. Some may decide to, uh, you know, use range partitioning with transaction date. Others may decide to use it with transaction ID. So that entirely depends on the person, but the technique remains the same. So suppose we decide to partition the sales data table uh, using transaction date and we decide to partition it by quarters of the year, right? So uh, here's how the range partition could be set up. So first partition ranges from 1st January to 31st March. Second partition, uh, 1st April till uh, 30th June. Uh, similarly, 1st July 30th till 30th September will be partition number, third partition, partition number three. And fourth partition ranges from 1st October till 31st December. Now, uh, what happens is when a new sales record is inserted into, you know, this sales underscore data table, the partitioning mechanism will automatically determine which partition the record should go into based on its transaction date, right? For example, a transaction, if, if the transaction uh, is dated, uh, so let's say transaction dated uh, February 15, right? So that transaction will uh, go into partition one, right? Uh, another example, suppose the date of the transaction is uh, May 10, right? So which partition? That will be second partition, right? November 5, that will be 5th November, right? So that would be partition number four. Uh, similarly, maybe August 20. So that will be partition number three, right? So this partitioning scheme, range partitioning, it allows for efficient querying and maintenance of data. When you are querying for sales data within a specific range, specific date range, uh, because again, range will also be different for different tables. So for this table, we are having a date range, right? So when you're querying sales data within that specific date range, the database will easily identify, you know, which partitions uh, need to be scanned. So it leads to improved query performance, right? It, instead of scanning the whole sales data table, uh, it will go to, you know, that specific partition, right? So scanning uh, is reduced. And additionally, it also helps with data, uh, data management. You can easily, you know, get fetch data. You can manage it. Uh, older data can be, you know, easily managed or backed up separately from more recent data when we are working with uh, dates in this manner. Right. So this is range partitioning. I hope it's clear. Now let's talk about hash partitioning. And I hope like as its name uh, implies, hash partitioning will make use of hash function uh, on a specific column of the table. Right. Uh, and based on the result of it. So every time we apply hash function on certain input, there will be some output. Right. Based on that output, data will be distributed across multiple nodes. And, and this method actually provides a uniform distribution of data and it also reduces uh, so it, uh, it it balances workloads i would say right 
so consider uh, let me give you an example now consider a table a name of the table is customer data underscore data right uh, now this table stores information about customers one of the columns that we're going to focus on is uh, one of the columns is customer id right so it is a unique identifier we all know that ids are always unique so it will be a it will be a unique identifier for every customer in the table and we want to use hash partitioning based on this this column customer id column right now suppose we decide to create four partitions using hash partitioning so uh, this is how the hash partitioning uh, will be set up um okay so this one so first partition customer id is hash to zero for the second partition customer ids are hashing to one maybe in the third partition it is hashing to two and three now what i mean by that is that because hash function will be applied on specific customer id right so every time you apply hash function on a, a number or like the id there will be some input right and that input may not be unique uh like the id it can be the same right so it could be like for a few customers the whenever you apply hash function output is the same maybe it is a one right so all of these go to partition number two right and when a new customer record is inserted into the customer data table the hash partitioning mechanism will uh, uh, using this mechanism uh, we will apply hash function to customer id and we will determine which partition the record should be placed in again when there is voluminous like the, when there is like uh, there are like large volumes of da of data this method is actually very useful because you are creating different partitions using hash function right so uh, another example like i've given here uh, suppose customer id is 12345 right and it hashes to 1 so it goes into partition number 2 uh sorry this partition right so because partition number 2 includes all ids that hash to 1 similarly if customer id is 98765 maybe it hashes to 3 so it goes to partition number 4 now let me tell you like you may ask why 12345 hashes to 1 and so on uh see it depends entirely on the use of hash function and its value so the statement 12345 hashes to 1 it it is just for illustration it means that when you input the value 12345 into the hash function or in other words when you apply that specific hash function on this input output is 1 now i don't know what that hash function is so you can take any hash function maybe in the coming lectures i'll give you a few examples of hash functions and how different hash functions can be applied on uh, you know on different inputs uh, but for the sake of this example uh just understand that any hash function you have you are applying it on this id and maybe the output is 1 right so this interpretation will actually differ for specific hash functions being used it entirely depends on the hash function okay and this partitioning scheme uh ensures that customer records are evenly distributed across the partitions which can help with load balancing and it also improves performance when when a person is querying or accessing customer data and hash partitioning is specifically useful when there is no clear pattern or range in the data and you want to distribute the data uniformly across partitions so usually like in the in previous example when we were talking about range partitioning we already had uh you know we had a clear pattern or range that was transaction date but maybe in this uh table we don't really have that range right so customer id maybe ranges from uh, id 1 id 2 id 3 id 4 but we don't really have a specific range uh, where we can decide that these ids go to you know a certain set of data or something so here we can create that range using hash function still we are not calling it a range partitioning it can be used for those uh scenarios where uh there is no clear range in the data or in the table okay it helps in creating a range using hash function again it is hash partitioning it's not a range partitioning uh, and the last one uh, for this video is list partitioning now list partitioning it involves if you have also watched python programming videos as we use you know lists in python 
So list always has a starting and end point. Uh, so similarly, list partitioning involves explicitly specifying the values that determine the partitioning boundaries. And it's useful when data needs to be grouped based on specific cat categories or attributes, right? Uh, what I mean by that? So uh, specific categories or attributes will be used to group data. And uh, when you do that, its boundaries are automatically defined. So let me give you an example. Again, imagine there is a table named product underscore inventory or invent. Um, I actually wanted to write inventory, but uh, I think that was that part is missing. So yeah, let's say the name of the table is product uh, underscore invent. Uh, and, and this table stores information about various products in a store. Uh, one of the columns in this table is product underscore category, which indicates uh, the category to which each product belongs, right? So different categories will be there. And we want to use list partitioning based on the product category column. Okay, again, for every partitioning method, we choose one specific column, right? I hope you know by now, for every partitioning method, we will choose a specific column. Now, suppose we decide to partition the product invent table into three partitions, partition one, two, and three. And again, what did we choose? Which column we, we chose? We chose product category. So different categories could be electronics, clothing, home goods, right? So we are creating three partitions for three categories. And when a new product record is inserted into the product invent table, the list partitioning mechanism will check the product category value to determine which partition the record should be placed in. Okay, for example, if a product is categorized as electronics, it would go into partition one. If it is categorized as clothing, it will go into partition two. Similarly, if, if the category is home goods, it will go into partition three. So this partitioning scheme allows for efficient querying uh, and maintenance of data for specific product categories, right? When querying for products within a certain category, the database can target the appropriate partition leading to improved query performance. So we are not really dealing with numbers here. Uh, per se, list partitioning is specifically you know, useful when you want to group data into uh, distinct predefined categories, basically for easier management and retrieval, right? So now let's talk about hybrid partitioning as well. It's very important uh, because it combines multiple partitioning techniques to meet you know, certain data distribution needs uh, because sometimes one partitioning method is not enough uh, to work with uh, you know, the table to actually optimize it. Uh, so for example, uh, you know, uh, range partitioning might be combined with hash partitioning to optimize both range based and equality based queries. Now, right, because uh, in range partitioning, we can have a certain range in hash partitioning, because we are, you know, uh, targeting for some equal uh, hash output. So those will be equality based queries. Uh, so hybrid partitioning combines, you know, multiple partitioning techniques within a single table, and it allows you to leverage the benefits of each technique for, you know, different subsets of data. Now, let me give you another hypothetical examples of hybrid partitioning using sales data table. So again, consider we have a table named sales data. Uh, it has information about sales transactions, and it has many columns. Uh, we're going to work with three columns, transaction date, customer ID and product category. And we want to use hybrid partitioning to optimize data storage and retrieval based on different criteria. So for this example, we'll combine range partitioning for historical data and hash partitioning for real time data, right? So range partitioning for historical data would mean that uh, we are working with dates, right? So we will again create maybe uh, five partitions and they will have a different range because we are using range partitioning. So different ranges are there, January 2010 uh, to December 2012. Partition second, second partition, we have January 2013 to December 2015 and so on. And then hash partitioning is used for real-time data. So that would mean uh, real-time data that would 
be based on customer ID, suppose, right? So that will be in sixth partitioning. So we are creating six partitions. Five of them include use range partitioning and the sixth one is using hash partitioning, right? Uh, and when we are inserting uh, new sales records, the hybrid partitioning mechanism will determine which partition to use based on the based on certain rules, right? So these are the partitions. First one is range partitioning. Second is hash partitioning and certain rules. Now you need to define those rules and it will entirely depend on the type of, you know, a table you have. So for this particular example, uh, let's say these are our specific rules. So if the transaction date falls within one of the range partitions, it, it will be placed in that specific range. And uh, if the transaction date is very recent, so maybe after January uh, 2022, right? Uh, it is placed in real time data, hash partition based on customer ID. Okay. Uh, because 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 uh, hash partitioning is being used for real time data. Fine. So this is the hybrid partitioning scheme, and uh, you know it allows for efficient querying of historical data using range partitioning, and also supports you know real time insertion and retrieval through hash partitioning. And uh, it helps in optimization of data storage, its retrieval and management for different time periods and usage patterns. Uh, now try, I, I want you to understand, uh, take it as a side note. Uh, this example, the main focus of this example is on range and hash partitioning, but other partitioning combinations are also possible in hybrid partitioning. We can have range list combination, we can have hash list, list combination. It depends on the specific needs of your database and your application. Okay, and uh, in the next video, we will talk about different optimization methods. Uh, I hope this uh, video was helpful. Uh, if you have any doubt, please uh, feel free to ask them. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Take care.